All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in to this uh, video. This video is going to be me showing you some of my um, stuff that I got for my telescope. Some upgrades, some parts, some accessories, and what do you have you? Um, these are some of the parts that I decided to get because people recommended them to me to get for my telescope. So maybe if you get the Celestron Power Seeker ADEQ and you have some money to spend, feel free to check out some of these parts. Um, uh, some of these I got myself because I wanted to try them out, not because other people recommended to recommended them to me. Um, one thing that I do have that I will not be showing, um, but I already did a video on, so I, I'm not really too much of a fan of it. Um, but uh, I do have it, but I'm not going to show it on camera. Anyway, I'm going to jump right into this. Um, so I'm going to be showing you my stuff that I got from my telescope. This is, I've done videos on a, on a lot of these parts. And what do you have you? And I'm just going to be showing you some of the stuff so that you're caught up to what I have. And I'll probably do a video later down the road showing uh, other things that I get for it as well. So this is part one of some of my stuff for my telescope. All right. So the first thing I'm going to show you is my di uh, my diagonal. This is my diagonal here. This here is my GSO uh, ninety percent or ninety nine percent dielectric diagonal. Um, this is the diagonal that I use. This is an upgraded diagonal from the the stock diagonal that comes with your telescope. Uh, it's a very nice and very nice. Uh, diagonal uh that's what it looks like there it's about a 70 dollar diagonal depending on whenever you buy it might be like 75 i paid 75 for mine but this is the diagonal here it's really nice it's made out of all metal all of its metal is what it's made out of just all metal put that to the side uh the next up is my two times barlow lens this here is my Two times Barlow lens. It's my GSO Shorty Barlow lens. This is the two times Barlow lens that I Barlow with my eyepieces. And I'll give you a good look at the lens on it. It's the actual lens is at the bottom. So there you go. You can't really see it too well, but you kind of see the little glass there on it. Nice clean lens. I keep a dust cap on it, obviously, when it's not, when it's out. Um, the next thing I got here, moving along here, is a uh, 20 millimeter, it's a 20 millimeter uh, Superview GSO eyepiece there. I'll give you guys a look at the eyepiece so you can see how wide it is. There you go, you guys can kind of see how wide... The lens is there. It's a pretty big, wide lens. Nice little wide lens for you to be able to take your eye relief off so you don't have to squint into, uh, you know, your, your, your eyepiece. And I got a 15 millimeter. Um, I don't, I guess I can, sh I really didn't want to take this out uh, because it's really not that impressive, but I figure why not? This is going to be a long video anyways. Um, I'm going to get some new caps for my new uh, case, uh, bottle uh, lens cases, I should say. Here is a 15mm. Uh, this is a 15mm GSO Superview Wide View. It's a four element um, eyepiece, which means that it has, I believe this means that it has four uh, separate lenses inside of it, which means there's four different glass uh, lenses, I believe is what that means. I could be wrong, but that's what I think it means. Here's a view of the eyepiece. It's a nice big wide one. You can kind of see how wide that GSO lens is on that. It's a pretty big wide one. Keeps you from having to squint down. All right, so the next thing I'm going to show you is my 10 millimeter eyepiece. Um, this is a 62 degree um eyepiece and this thing cost me ten dollars on ebay so just so you know this is a ten dollar eyepiece i think i saw it i think i saw one from the seller he might be selling them for 7.99 he did his price is just very it's um I, I already uploaded a video so check my channel for 
for the video. It has a link to the, the eBay seller uh, if you want to get this eyepiece. It's a very nice eyepiece. Really good um, surface views of the moon and stuff, especially some of the planets too. Let's see if I can take the cap off here. So this here is the eyepiece. Let's see if my focus will come in on this. So come on, focus. There we go. So hopefully you can read that right there. It's going to be a little bit in and out of focus. Let's see if I can refocus this real quick. I need a new camera. So there you go. 62, 62 degree, 10 millimeter eyepiece, 62 degree. Here's the eyepiece right here. This is what the eyepiece, this is how big the eyepiece is. It's not too bad on your eyes. I mean, you kind of have to squint a little bit, but it's not too bad. It's not as bad as the <laughs> the four millimeter eyepiece that came with the the telescope that I got. I mean, other than that, it's a really, really nice uh, eyepiece. It was recommended to me on astronomy forum, uh, net. A lot of people were talking about getting it. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is my accessory case. This is my my case that I picked up from a store named Big Lots. Um, it's a store that kind of like sells like closed out, discontinued products and stuff. It's it's not all the greatest. I mean, they they got a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. For those of you who've never heard of it before, um, I'm sure you can find this at a, find a tub like this anywhere. It's it's probably something I'm gonna use temporarily until I get more stuff. But this is the case here. This is the little accessory case. You can see there's my web camera down there, which I'll show you guys uh, shortly. And some of my middle row stuff, which is like my, my cell phone mount, my cleaning solutions and stuff like that for cleaning uh, the eyepieces and the telescope off and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna go down to the, the level two now. This is the middle row. I've already showed you the top row, which is, contains my eyepieces. So I'm gonna take the top row off of here real quick and place it to the side. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is my phone mount. Uh, this this phone mount is pretty good, but it's a little heavy for your for some telescopes. You'll have to do some balancing to get it on your telescope correctly. But this thing right here is a is a is a phone mount, and I believe it'll go over up to a two inch eyepiece. Don't quote me on that, but I think it will. I know it fits fine on some of the one quarter inch eyepieces that I have. There's no problem at all. I have it kind of centered, uh, aligned perfectly for my telescope, so it's viewing over the eyepiece. But uh, yeah, this is the eye. This is my little phone mount. This allows me to take my phone, phone like this here. Nexus Six is what I have, and you simply take your eyepiece of your, your camera on your phone, and you wanna put it through this hole right here, this little phone where your eyepiece would go over, and then the camera, the phone sits on top of it. I don't know if I can do this or not with the with the phone, but <laughs> with one hand, but it sits basically like something like this here. So this is how your phone sits, there we go. So the, the camera, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten this real quick because I don't want my camera to fall on the, on the phone, I mean on the floor, but there you go, you can kind of see then, then you can see the camera is like right there. Then you would kind of move it to center it with your eyepiece. So that's your eyepiece is level with the uh, the camera on your phone. Now it's a lot easier with, uh, with the iPhones because it's a little bit slider. You would have to adjust this little back part here. There's a little, there's a little wing nut here that lets you kind of slide it back and forth uh, to line up with your camera on your phone. And you can kind of slide it down or slide it up. Uh, as far as I can reach. So again, this is the phone mount that I use. I use this for, it's really great because, you know, if I want to do some live streaming or, if, or just hold it over my phone and take some steady, steady pictures of the planets and stuff like that, um, I don't have to worry about my my hands shaking around and stuff. You can actually find these cheaper than that. I, for, I want a good quality one. I've seen some cheaper ones. I don't know. I couldn't recommend them. This one, it, it's not too bad. Not too bad. It's better than the one, the other one that I got. I got a Carson's hookup, which is the one I didn't show you. Um, but uh, that one was a bit of a pain because the grips don't hold too well on eyepieces. So you will possibly have those grips slide off or they move. So they're not really good. This thing, 
This thing has pads on it so you can tighten it up. You take this thing here and you spin it and spin it and spin it really tight on the eyepiece and then it really doesn't move at all. So uh, the next thing I've got here is Kleenex wipes. These are non-scented ones. I take these and spray a little bit of the next thing I'm going to show you. So these are just normal uh, Kleenex wipes. Pretty good for cleaning your eyepiece. They get a little bit of dust. They get a little bit of uh, lint on your eyepieces, but I've got something, two things that I'll show you that I use to get those lints, those lint off, and they work pretty good. Um, so like everybody else, some of you probably have one of these. It's a lens pens cleaner. Uh, this thing is a little bit of a disappointment because the chamois will put particles all over your eyepiece. And not to forget the little brush. The little camel hair brush is nice. It, I mean, it gets like the, you know, a little brush off the camera here a little bit. There we go. So we're brushing off the camera there. Um, and it works pretty good for the cameras and your DSLRs and stuff. Clean off the little dust particles after you've used the Kleenex, the little Kleenex wipes or toilet tissue. It's got a little lint on it so it gets on your eyepieces and stuff. And you have to kind of brush it off with the, with the lens pens after you use like a cleaning solution, like 50% alcohol and 50% water uh, solution. Um, and you would brush it after it dries off, you'd brush it off a little bit. And then the next thing you would use which is something you all should have. I picked this up off of eBay, and it works pretty good. It's a puffer. It's basically a puffer. It blows a puff of air. You can hear that, right? I'm sure you can, and it's annoying, ain't it? Guaranteed to scare the wildlife off when you're out in the middle of the forest, and you're making that... Making that little sound that it makes um, but not too bad it, it blows off dust particles so if you can blow off a little bit of dust particles on my camera anyways that's this is a little puffer I picked up off of eBay for a couple of bucks came from China took a little bit to get here but it's well worth it well worth it because this thing is probably worth it probably sells here in America for like 10 bucks 5 to 10 bucks in America and I pay like 99 cents for that on eBay next thing I have is my cleaning solution this is just a bottle an eyeglass bottle that my parents had cleaning their eyeglass cleaning solution in it. I didn't trust whether the eyeglass stuff expired or not, so I dumped it out. And I talked to some of the people on Astronomy Forum, and they recommended that I make a solution of 50% distilled water, which I use the uh, the um, Nestle's Pure Life water, and um, it's filtered water, and 50% um, of 91% uh, uh, alcohol, which is the red bottle. I believe it's the red and white bottle and it says 91% on it. That's the uh, alcohol that you probably want to use. Uh, do your research on that before you quote me on that. Um, I got a cloth in here, but it ain't worth taking it out. It's just so I can wipe my telescope down because it gets a little bit of dust particles and dust and dew on it. So I like to clean off my telescope and make it nice, nice and pretty and shiny because uh, I like it nice and clean and shiny. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to show you, because of course we're on, we're on row, the middle row of my accessory case here. You guys can see some of my accessories in there. That's all the stuff that I showed you. Um, and then at the last row is basically the row that my web camera is on. Uh, this is my next image five that I'm going to show you here in a second. Um, now I just want to say I made a video on the next image five on an unboxing video. What I did not show you was the web camera, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So this video is for you guys who watched my video on the next image five, but missed out because I little I kind of chickened out and didn't want to open it up. And I told you, by the way, it did not come with a cap. Well, I lied, and I stand corrected. Here's the cap that goes over the the camera. So it does come with a dust cap. However, there's no dust. It doesn't fit on the uh, cylinder. I'm going to show you real quick. I'm gonna just going to unplug the web camera real quick from the USB cable. So this here is the Next Image 5 web camera. This is what it looks like for all the moment we've been waiting for. This is basically what the Next Image 5 looks like. Your little USB uh, plugs into that little hole down there on the bottom. Right there at the bottom there, the USB cable, so the small end goes into there and your big end goes into your laptop. Um, I'm going to show you as best as I can. 
I got a little dust cap on here to keep the sensor from getting dirty uh, because it, the, the little cap doesn't fit on the camera. But I'm gonna take the dust cap off. There you go. Kind of see down into the thing there. I'm gonna take the cylinder off, the little thing that goes over the eyepiece. So it makes a little bit of noise here. And we're taking it off. So here's the little um, cap that goes into your eyepiece. It goes into your your dialog your diagonal or over your Barlow lens down into your Barlow lens, and then the camera would sit on top of that. Um, I'm going to give you a look at the sensor now of the, of the Next Image 5. So this here is the Next Image 5. You can kind of see the little sensor in there. It's a little tricky to get, but you can see the little chip back in there. It kind of looks like it has like a little sensor, so you might be able to use a brush on it if you get particles on that. Um, that little glass thing. It's just kind of red. It's kind of like a little red glare. And this is the next image five. Now, what I'm going to show you is, is how the cap goes on. This is a little, this is a little dust cap, and it goes on the front here, and it just screws on. And when you get the next image five, it will have a little dust cap like that, and then it covers up, basically covers up the the little chip so it doesn't get dust in it. I don't really use the black the cap on it because uh, I always keep it ready, so it's all ready to go whenever I want to use it. Simply unscrew the cap here. And then you got your camera exposed. You take your cylinder, is what I call. I don't know what you really call this thing, and you screw it onto your next image five, like so, like that, right? But sadly, it would have been nice if this cap would have fit on this, but it doesn't. I mean, it it kind of does fit on it, but the problem is, see how it kind of fits over it. But sadly, what happens is, is when we do it like this it will kind of fall off. Whoops, it fell off and now I gotta go find it. But yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It falls off and it doesn't look like it screws on or anything, so that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to show you of some of my accessories that I got for my camera. Now the one other thing that I'm planning to get, so well, there's a couple things I'm planning to get before I end this video. I'm planning to get a, a solar filter from a Thousand Oaks. Uh, it's about a $80 uh, solar filter. I'm not sure how great it is, how much of a detail I'm going to get on the sun, whether it's just going to be a, a a blob of white or a blob of yellow or whatever. But hopefully I'm going to see some details on the sun because I've seen some pictures of them taking video of the, sol of the sun. And I think it's just because they're using cheap filters and that's the reason why it looks like garbage. But it really looks really disappointing looking at it. I'm hoping to be able to see some solar flares little flares of the sun flaring out and stuff. Yeah, but I didn't see any of that on any of the videos that I saw people taking like a uh, camera strip cape and putting it over it and making it into that. I don't know. Um, I figured I'll drop the 80 bucks for a thousand oaks and try that out. Um, and the other thing I'm going to get uh, in two weeks from this video is a finder scope, a brand new one. I'm going to go with an Orion 9X50. I'm going to go with one of them. Hopefully that'll help me with my web camera because this thing is hard to use. The software, I'm going to tell you real quick, is kind of tricky to use to find the planets, especially with the Power Seeker ADEQ. It's probably a lot easier with a go-to system because the go-to system will allow you to track, will track the planets while you're switching between eyepieces and the camera. But I will say right now it's a big learning curve. But then again, so was the learning curve of learning how to use my Equatoria mount. Anyways, clear skies to everybody. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.